Hello, I am Dr. Brian Harris. I am a dentist in Phoenix, Arizona, and I wanted to share with you today something that has been helpful for me in my practice. We'll call this a practice inspiration on how to see things differently. So this is a great one for you doctors if you're watching, but this is also a fantastic way to get your team involved and get them more aligned with you and your vision and what you want to create with your practice. So for this to work right, I need you to take everything you currently know about dentistry and about the way you've always done things and just for 15 minutes, like delete that and give me 15 minutes to, to share with you some ideas that, that are going to be different, but that will hopefully allow you to see what, what could be possible for you in your practice. So before I dive into that, I want to share a story and I'm going to like pause for a minute to see if anybody recognizes who this man is because usually there's like one like hand in the back of the room that's like oh wait you know isn't that the hot dog guy and it is it's the hot dog guy so this is this is Kobayashi who's very famous and known for eating hot dogs what, what many people don't know about him is his story which I think is fascinating so he was born in 78 you know this five feet you know eight inches 120 pounds and he was in college in Japan and he was dared by one of his roommates to enter an eating contest. And so he took, took on this bet and he entered it and he won. And so after he won, he set this wild goal of wanting to be the best like competitive eater in the world. And what he brought to competitive eating was something totally different. Because up until this time, you know, the, the fastest way to eat and the way to eat the most amount of food was just to eat food, just like you normally would. But he took that and for months he studied how could he make that process more efficient. So he deconstructed everything he knew about eating hot dogs and he looked at things differently. So at that time the, the record was 25 and a half hot dogs. And I mean, remember this is like years and years in the Coney Island hot dog eating contest of people eating like 12 hot dogs and then 13, 15, 18. And at that time the highest anybody ever got to was, was 25 hot dogs. So he shows up 2001, he shows up to the crowd pretty much getting laughed at. I mean, imagine this, this 128 pound man, he shows up and he eats 50 hot dogs in 12 minutes. So not only does he beat the record, but he like destroys the record. He doubles the record. And it had people completely fascinated by him and who he was. And for anybody who's watched this live on TV, what he did is he just looked at the idea of eating hot dogs and he made it more efficient. So he takes the hot dog out of the bun he swallows the hot dog basically whole and then dips the bun in water and just swallows it. So it's, it's a disgusting way to do it, but he does it and he doubles the record. The best part of the whole story for me, in my opinion, is now, you know, a handful of years later, look at Joey Chestnut, 74 hot dogs. So you take this record that was kind of humming along here, not doing much. He goes in and doubles it. But because he shows the world a way to see things differently in the way something could be done, now we have people beating that record year after year. So I could have used four or five different analogies. I mean, there's a lot of different stories like this uh, in, out there in the world, whether it's the four minute mile or, or many other things like this. When, when people see what's possible, then you know, there's not any more limits and they can, they can you know, expand on that. And so I don't wanna spend this whole time talking about hot dogs. My main goal is in this next few minutes, I wanna show you how to go from eating 26 hot dogs to eating 50. And I want you to then go with your teams, sit down and look for ways to then go on and eat 75 hot dogs and more. Because I'll show you the things that work in my practice that I was able to stop and look at things differently and see like real results in my practice. So number one, I want you to look at your brand as something different than you normally would. Okay, so in dentistry in general, like our brand is, like my brand used to be Harris Dental. It was the website, the Harris logo. I had t-shirts, I had hats made. I mean, that was my brand. That's all we talked about was Harris Dental. And that's how branding has been in, in the world. Initially, it was just as dentist. It was our names on, the, on a sign, right? And then everything went away from that to more branded names like Harris Dental, Agave Dental, you know, Willow Creek Dental. It was more these, these names and these brands. But you know what's happening? It's going back the other way now. So we see it in plastic surgery, we see it in all these different fields, everything's going back to a personal brand. Okay, so the difference of, of what you see here is you've got a website for somebody to come and find me, they've got to go search my name, 
they've got to get onto the site, then they've got to click on About Us, go down to Doctors, click Dr. Brian Harris. They're like eight clicks deep into a website before they even get to see me or in my, my before and afters. And what's happened now is social media, the ability to have like a highlight reel of your work every single day, that's different. That's a personal brand. Now they get to see me, they get to see my family, they get to see my before and after cases, and they get to see my patients. So this idea of branding, I want you to see differently and look for ways to brand yourself differently. Look for ways to like really create a persona about yourself of, of somebody who is really good at what they do. So I was, I was sitting one night talking to my wife about this very topic before I started really getting into this. And, and she said, it was a comment that she made to me that, that I'll never forget. She said, Brian, she's like, the, the thing is like, People know you're a dentist, they just don't really know what you do. And I, I sat and thought about that for a minute, and she's like, how do you expect for people to know the kind of work you do? Like, where are they gonna see it? Unless they come in for a consult, they're never gonna know that. And so I took that idea and I thought, you know, I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm gonna start posting about it, I'm gonna start showing the world what I do. And it took me from doing about one cosmetic case a week, maybe like two a month, to starting two new smiles every single day now. So I went from being a general dentist doing some cosmetic dentistry to the last two and a half, almost three years now, all I do is, is smile design work. And it's because people now know what I do. They know who I am personally. They know the type of work that I can do. So when I talk about social media, I'm not talking about this. This is what we used to know as social media. This is, you know, uh, flossing memes and pictures of your team um, on their birthday and patient of the week. This is good stuff. It's good, feel good, but that's more like culture building, feel good. That's what I call social media. I'm talking about social proof. And, and the difference of social proof is that's, that's kind of like, hey, here's who I am. You know, the, the social part, here's like my family, my patients, and here's proof that I'm pretty good at what I do. So for specialists watching this, you could do this with implants, you could do this with ortho, you could do this with any specialty. You know, just pick what it is that you want to do more of in your practice and build your brand around that. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing that's changed in dentistry is before it would take years and years to build a reputation. Now you just build it. You go out and create it and build it and you can start doing more of the stuff that you love to do. Okay, so personal brand plus clinical proof that's where the trust comes in. Because now it's not just like, hey, I connect with this person, but now it's I connect with this person and wow, they do a good job. If I have a question about something, I feel totally comfortable messaging them and asking, how much does it cost? Like, what is this procedure like? And then that's when, that's when things get interesting because now you can control those conversations. Okay, so the next thing that I want to challenge you to do is see things differently as it relates to treatment presentation and treatment planning. Okay, the, the way we have always been taught and the way we were taught in dental school was patient comes in, we lean him back, we start yelling off numbers to our assistant, you know, MO on number two, crown on number three. It's the same thing we all do it in all our practices because that's all we know how to do. And so you, you can't like really tell people what's possible until you do that legally to see what's happening and then you sit down with them and you explain all that to them and then you give them treatment plans and you give them a cost breakdown and you expect them to now make a decision 100 percent on logic and that's difficult that's where people get confused okay so we're going to get into how how i do this differently now in my practice and, and what a big difference it's made but I want to share a quote from Mark Cuban. I love this quote. He says, make your product easier to buy than your competition or you will find your customers buying from them and not you. So this idea that we make it difficult for our patients to do business with us sometimes because we make it difficult for them to understand like what could be done and how much it's going to cost. We just don't tell them unless they come all the way down to meet with us and, and sit with us for an hour. Okay, so this is... If you break down dentistry as a sales process and you look at it just strictly from sales, it is a super inefficient process, okay? You have leads coming in, whether it's social media, website, mailers, whatever they may be, you have leads coming in over here and then that lead comes into a funnel where it usually leads to a phone call or somebody sending an email. And what we don't realize is the person then picking up the phone, they're not like master 
answerers of the phone and schedulers. They're just the people we trust to sit at the front desk and take good care of our practice. And they're great people, but they may not have the best phone skills. So that's like one area that lead could drop off because maybe the phone call isn't handled very well. And then from there, you know, it sounds crazy, but then, now the patient's got to show up. They've got to actually be in the office, you know, sometimes flat tires, uh, you know, they, they get sick, kids, kids get, get sick or they, they, they can't go into school. And so all these things can happen to prevent them from, from actually showing up at the office. Then if they actually do show up, now we've got to somehow connect with them in like two minutes and, and become best friends before we tell them about all the money they're going to have to spend on their teeth. And then, you know, it just goes down the line. Then there's the treatment plans, there's the money talk, and then they've got to go home usually and talk to their spouse. So it's no wonder that most of the time we get about 40% case acceptance on treatment that we present because you know there's there's an inefficient process. And and what I would like to have you see differently is there's a different way to do it. And before I get like further into this, I want to pause and say this is not treatment planning. This is not diagnosis. There's no way you can do that unless the patient's in the chair. But what I found in my practice is usually patients want to know like three things. They want to know like, who do I trust to take care of me? They want to know what kind of options do I have and what's it going to cost? And so what I do now is I use virtual consults and I use video technology to communicate with patients and just answer their questions before they come in to see me. Okay, so it takes the awkward money conversations off the table. It builds immediate trust because you're, you're telling them what it is that they want to know it's super convenient for them because they can watch this video now when they have time. It's great for me, I can come in early in the morning and record when I have time, and it just, it builds the trust in the relationship and just takes it to a whole new level. Okay, so I'm not gonna go in too deep into this right now, but basically they can go in, they can upload their photo to a website, they can upload their photo on your own website with, with a widget that, that collects this information right when they land on your homepage, or they can do it through social media. So the photo comes in and they say, hey, Brian, this is what I want to do. I've always wondered if, if I can improve my smile, you know, what would it cost? They send that over and then I can then sit down and record a live video in a HIPAA compliant fashion that then gets sent to them and they get to watch when they have time. So if you look at that now, now the lead comes in, but instead of all these places for it to fall off, now I can sit right in front of my computer screen like I'm doing with you right now and say, hey, listen, you know, Jenny, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Like what's most important to me is that, that you find a way to improve your smile and have it look amazing, but have it work within your budget too. And so let me go over with you some of the things that I see and, and some of the ways we've helped other people just like you. And let me show you how you can now, you know, do this for yourself. So now I don't have to worry about them showing up the office. Like I just showed up in their living room you know, where they're watching it on their computer, right? I don't have to worry about, you know, the awkward money conversations. I don't have to worry about connecting with them because I can now connect with them. And if I mess up, just re-record and do it again. You know, I don't have to worry about, are they gonna need to go home and talk to their spouse because most likely their spouse is gonna watch it with them. Okay, so that's how you take 40% case acceptance and turn it into 85 because if I send a video like that to every new patient or anybody who's gonna come in and see me and they show up in my office, like what, what do we now know about that patient? Like we know that, that they've pretty much accepted it, right? You've told them your fees, you've told them everything that needs to be done, they're in your office, you know they're ready to move forward with treatment. So it, you know, if, if you wanna quickly change the way that you diagnose more cosmetic cases or do more big cases in your practice, change the way you communicate with patients. You know, just that one thing alone and breaking down those barriers, it will drastically change the way that your patients feel about treatment when you're talking to them about it because the trust will already be there. So I wanna close with a little activity. I think it would be great for you doctors to sit down with your team and look at your practice and the challenge is try to find one thing. Don't do any more than one because I don't know, we sometimes like get this idea of we need to have like three or four things and, and then we don't do any of them. Just choose one thing. Choose the one thing in your practice that, that you would love to change as a team and say, okay, what if we could transform this and do it differently? Like how amazing would that be? And then sit down 
And as a team, take any ideas of how you used to do that, throw it out the window, and with fresh minds say, okay, how could we see this differently? What are some ways that we could better connect with patients to improve our case acceptance? What are some ways that we can better communicate with patients emotionally to give them a preview of their smile and let them wear it home for the day and increase case acceptance that way? What are some ways that we can talk to our patients about financing so that they want to move forward with treatment? There's so many different little ways that you can implement this in the practice. Choose one, do it, try it for a month, and see the type of results it gives you. I promise you, you will see change in your practice. And when you see that it actually works, then the next month, choose something else. So I hope that is helpful for you. It's been, it's been a huge thing for me in my practice, and it's, it's completely transformed how we do things. And yeah, we see it in the numbers. We're seeing extreme growth. We saw 30% growth in production last year alone. Uh, it's, been, it's just been nuts of what it's done for our practice, but it takes effort and it takes, it takes the doing, not just the knowing. So I hope that's been helpful and thank you very much.